Hi guys, Jordan with Motion Array, and today we're taking a look at how to create this typography background effect inside of After Effects. And stay till the end to find out how you could win a free year subscription to MotionArray.com. So this is the basic effect that we're going to be recreating. Essentially what we're learning how to do is take an animation or object we've created, in this case an expanding text box, and make it into a nice looking repeating background that has identical movement but just altered enough to make it look like a separate element. This is a really cool looking effect and it's surprisingly simple to achieve. So let's jump into After Effects and take a look at how to do it. So let's start with the first step, creating this auto scaling text box portion. We've actually gone over how to create this text box effect already and I'll link to that full video walkthrough in the description below in case you wanted to dive more into that. All that to say, I'm just going to be going over it briefly here, but I won't be stopping to go into too much detail. And if you had your own custom element you wanted to apply this effect to, you can skip forward to this part of the tutorial. So let's start by creating our text by just clicking our text tool here or hitting Control or Command T and making it say whatever you want. And a quick way to center it perfectly is by going up to a line and clicking horizontal and vertical align. Now we're going to make each of the letters appear in sequence by creating a scale range selection. Drop down your text layer here and click on animate, scale. You should see that each letter now has its own marker underneath of it, and we can now control each of these letters individually with our range selector. So drop down range selector and keyframe it to start at zero wherever you want your text to begin animating. Then move forward to wherever you want the animation to finish appearing and bring it up to 100%. You should have this. Nothing should happen yet until we take our scale here and drop it all the way down to zero. Now our text starts at a scale of zero and then scales up as the range selector crosses over it. And now we can highlight these two keyframes, right click, go to keyframe assistant, and select easy ease for a more natural look. You can also enter the graph editor to further customize your look. Now we're gonna be creating the auto scaling text box portion. Create a shape underneath of your text by making sure that no layer is highlighted, and then select the rectangle tool and click and drag over top of your text. It's okay for it to be really messy for right now as we're gonna be adding a script that makes changes for you. Make sure that the shape layer is the bottom layer. Underneath rectangle, rectangle path, size, you're gonna hold alt or option and click on the stopwatch here, which will allow you to enter an expression. And you're gonna paste in script one, which is located in the description below. It will not work properly until you rename this my text layer, exactly the same thing as you've labeled your text layer here. If you wanna be sure, just right click and rename your text layer and control or command copy that exact text and paste it into your section here. And what you should see is that your text box sort of follows your text, but it's missing some key points. So under position, hold alt or option and click on this stopwatch and paste in script two, making sure again to change the my text layer name to your specific text layer again. Now highlight your text box and horizontally and vertically align it to find that it works perfectly with your text. Except for one thing, it's a little bit too narrow. It's exactly the same size as your text, so it needs a little bit of padding. So in your text box layer, click add and select offset paths and increase the amount to your liking. And there you go, you've created an auto scaling text box that updates and works even if you change the actual text that you want it to say. So now we're up to this point. We're ready to actually create the background out of this element we've created. And it's actually easier than you think. Start by pre-composing the text and the text box together by holding shift and clicking both, right clicking and selecting pre-compose. And make sure to select move attributes to new composition. Then dive into this pre-composed layer by double clicking. And from here, we're gonna go to the composition settings and start to drag the width and height down until we get something more like this. The purpose is that when we create the tile effect from this composition, it will take all of the negative space as well. So if we left it just as it was by default with a lot of empty space, it would look something like this. But now after reducing the composition size, it'll look more like this. See the difference? Play around with it until you get something that you like, and if you find that you need to make changes later, you can always come back and make those changes no problem. Let's go back now to the other composition by pressing the tab button once. And you can move backwards to the previous composition by clicking this one here. Nice. 
Okay, so here we're going to duplicate our text composition and rename one to be original and one to say background. Now to actually create the background effect, go up to effects and search for the motion tile effect and drag and drop it onto the background layer. You won't notice any change until you start to increase the output width and height, which will start to show up more of the duplicated background. If you find that you still can't see any of it, you might need to scale down your entire background composition. Highlight your background composition, click the shortcut key S, and scale down. And now when we play it back, you can see that we get exactly the same effect that we originally created, only now it's tiled to make a background. To make this a little less confusing, I'm just going to hide the original layer so that we're only working with the background. So now we can stylize this background look a little bit by rotating the entire background composition. Highlight the background composition and click the R key and rotate it to whatever you like. It's starting to look pretty nice, but we can go even further by changing the phase, which offsets these duplicates from each other and gives a little bit more of a staggered look. And personally, I like the horizontal phase shift a little bit better. So we've created our background, but there's still a problem. Our original is the same color as our background, and we lose a little bit of the separation between the two. It doesn't look the best, so I'm going to add a tint effect to the original layer and swap the black and white from each other so that it's the opposite of what it was originally. If we were working with color, we could also change this to be any color we wanted instead of black and white, but I'm going to be sticking with black and white personally for now. Lastly, to create a little bit more separation, I'm going to add a Gaussian blur to the background layer and make it a value of about 10. And now here we've created a pretty awesome looking effect. But to help you see it a little bit clearer, I'm going to add a motion array purple background. And you can see that this is our result. It's pretty close to the original. There's just two little things that we're missing. One is that right after the animation completes, there's a quick scale down for the original and a quick scale up for the background. That part's easy, as we just have to take the original, and when we want it to start scaling down, keyframe the scale. Then move forward a few frames, and scale down. Now with these keyframes still visible, go back to the first keyframe, and do the same thing for the background layer. Set a scale keyframe for where it is right now, and then move forward to the exact same place of the second keyframe. Only this time, instead of scaling down, we're going to scale up. It's starting to look pretty nice, but there's one little trick that we can do to give this a lot of pop. We're first going to highlight all of these keyframes, right click, go down to keyframe assistant, and give them an easy ease. And making sure that these are still highlighted, we're going to go up to our graph editor and make sure that we're in the speed graph section. From here, you can see that we can make changes to both of these composition keyframes at the same time. And if we click and drag over top of these keyframe sections here, and then drag on these little handles, we can give a stronger ease in and out to both of them at the same time in a way that's exactly proportional. What can help is that if you hold the shift button while you're dragging these handles in and out, it'll make sure that you're only moving from left to right. And now what we have is something that really closely resembles our template footage. But you might notice that the template example has a bit more of a stop motion feel. Why is that? Well, it's because it's actually playing back at a lower frame rate. It's actually playing at 15 frames per second to be specific. So from here, if you go up to composition, composition settings, you can change the frame rate to something that's a little bit lower. If you wanted a truly stop motion feel, either 12 or 15 frames per second will traditionally give you that type of look, but 15 frames per second is what we're going with personally for this effect. And there you have it, that's our effect. That's how you create a repeating background from an element and have them both play on screen at the same time. And here's the amazing thing, once you're done all of that, you can go back into your original text composition and change the word or phrase that you animated and everything will respond and update in your final composition without having to reanimate anything. And guys, that's it. That's how you take an effect or an asset and turn it into an animated background inside of After Effects. And if you guys like this effect, the template that we're actually replicating from comes from one of our contributors at Motion Array under the name Lightbox. And the pack that this is from has nine other amazing typography effects that I personally really love. If you guys wanted to check that out, I'll leave a link in the description below. And we also have a ridiculous number of other typography templates to help you get some amazing results with little to no effort.
And guys, I'm actually super excited to say that this is the first tutorial we've released since passing 250,000 subscribers. Thank you guys so much for your support over the last four years. It really means a lot to me that you're continuing to watch these videos and actually get some practical use out of them. Every so often I see a comment from somebody who was there from pretty much the very beginning, which is incredible and I'm just so grateful. And to celebrate, we're gonna be giving away a one year free subscription to motionray.com. All you have to do is make sure that you're subscribed and then leave a comment down below. Just make sure to include the hashtag motionray.com motion array 250k. Maybe leave a comment telling me how long you've been subscribed to the channel. I'm going to be drawing the winner on Thursday. That's in two days. So make sure to keep your ears out and check in to see who actually won. But guys, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye.